In this video, I'm going to present how to code in MATLAB a simple iterative image reconstruction algorithm. Now, it's called maximum likelihood expectation maximization, but here we'll just focus on the simplicity of implementation of a very straightforward, robust, iterative reconstruction method. So I'm going to start off with a motivating um, example here where we've got a, a true object inside some medical imaging uh, device like a, maybe a PET scanner or a CT scanner and what we ultimately end up with from doing a scan is some measured data and I'm going to be calling that a measured sinogram and the goal is uh, to iteratively estimate that object um, based only on the measured data. So here I've got a zero iteration, in other words, just an initial guess of what that object was inside the scanner. And we're going to um, forward model this and compare it to the actual measurement. So here I'm just going to do a, a radon transform, a forward projection. And that's what we're seeing here. We're just forward projecting that uniform image. And then we're just going to compare it to the measurement. So here's the measured sinogram divided by my forward projection of my uniform starting guess. And that's the ratio in the top right corner here. What we're going to do next is back project that, divide by sensitivity image, and then multiply. And that's all there is to it, and we'll go into the code in a few moments' time. There's the back projection of that ratio, which we then multiply here, um, and then we forward project it again. We can take the ratio again, that's shown in the top right corner here, so we can now back project that ratio once again, um, and multiply there, ready to forward project again. And so this is a very, very simple iterative method. And so I'm just going to show you now how to code this up in MATLAB. So we'll open up um, a text editor window in MATLAB and uh, just get on with coding it. So first of all, I'm just going to clear all of the any of the variables in memory, uh, close um, all the figures, and then we're going to open up a new figure in order to um, display some test object. So I'm going to have a, a true um, object here. And I'm just going to use the MATLAB uh, phantom function, um, which is going to create that Shep Logan phantom we've just seen in that example. And I'm going to make it of um, dimension XD, which can vary. So I can just define that at the top of the code here. XD is, say, 128 pixels. So XD stands for the X dimension, but here it's used for X and Y dimensions of that phantom. Um, and then what we're going to do is just check that all is well. Uh, we're just going to do a subplot to display so let's do maybe, um, let's do two rows, three columns, and then the first uh, panel in that collection of six panels that are gonna make up that figure. We're just gonna do an im show of that uh, true object. And we're gonna display that object between a zero starting value. And I should point out actually that that phantom in MATLAB often has negative values in it. So we're just gonna take the absolute value of the phantom to make sure there are no negatives there. So we're going to display that true object um, between zero and uh, the maximum value. So I'm just going to inspect all of the elements in the array that is the true object. I'm just going to convert it into just a, a vector there. Uh, search for the max and use that as the display maximum. So let's first of all make sure that this is uh, functioning as we might expect. So I'm just going to run that. Okay, so the figure is just coming up there. Okay, so that is showing uh, the true object. And uh, what we're going to do then is generate some artificial uh, measured data. So uh, measured data is just going to be, what we're going to do is the forward projection along line integrals. Um, so it's just the radon transform of that true object. Okay, but what we're going to need to do is specify which angles we want to um, forward project into. So I'll call those um, azimuthal uh, viewing angles and uh, we'll just um, do those to be between one degree and one degree increments up to 180 degrees and uh, hopefully that's all the information that we need in order to create a measured um, sinogram. So let's just check uh, that this is working. So I'm just going to display that measured sinogram um, the measured data, if you like. Um, I'm going to display it in the transpose because um, I prefer to have the azimuthal viewing angles uh, going vertically. Um, okay, so we're now ready to take a look at that. Let's check that that is what we expect. And indeed, um, I've now got a figure 
um, which uh, shows the, the true object and uh, the sinogram. So the goal then is going to be to reconstruct that object from that sinogram. So what we're going to do then is say, let's do an iterative loop. So I'm going to use II, um, or in fact, let's, let's go for IT for iteration between one and say 10 iterations. There's my iterative loop. And the basic idea is going to be that I'm going to start off with a, a reconstructed image. Uh, which initially is just a value of 1 everywhere. So that's just in MATLAB, we use uh, 1s. And I'm just going to make it of the same size as the true object. Okay, so that's just my uh, uh, initial reconstructed image. Okay, um, so first of all, then we're going to need to uh, forward project that. So we're going to use, again, the, the radon transform operating on that reconstructed image and again we're going to forward project it into those azimuthal angles between 1 and 180 degrees. Um, now the algorithm we're going to be using uh, is an iterative approach where we just as we saw before we just look at the ratio between um, the measured uh, data so let's do a ratio of the uh, measured data and we're just going to do a element by element division with uh, the forward projection. Now strictly here we should be careful about division by zeros um, so I'm just going to uh, do a bit of a hack here and just do a safety offset just to avoid division by zero and that's going to be like a, a ratio sinogram. So what we might want to do already in this iterative loop is uh, take a look at that ratio to make sure it's um, what we'd expect it to be and um, yeah, okay, so let's already then, um, let's take out the iterative loop for the moment and just check that this ratio is running as we'd expect it to. Okay, so this is looking quite good. We've got a ratio sinogram in the top right corner there. Um, so it might also be good to display uh, the reconstructed image. So what we can do uh, is put that in the bottom left box. So that's um, position one, two, three, four to go to the bottom left box. And we're going to display the reconstructed image. Uh, we don't want to transpose on that, we just want to show it as it is, just the X, Y um, as they are in MATLAB. And that will then display what the reconstructed image is looking like. And initially it's just going to be a uniform image. Right, um, now, once we've got the uh, ratio, so remember we've got the reconstructed image there. Uh, we forward projected it, and then what we've done is take a ratio measurement to forward projection, a little safety offset there. We've displayed that ratio. Now we need to uh, back project uh, that ratio. So for that, we're going to use uh, it's just the transpose of that radon forward model. Um, in MATLAB, that's done using uh, the inverse radon function, but we don't want the inverse because the inverse is going to be a, a ramp filtered back projection. We just want to simply transpose, um, have the adjoint or the transpose of the forward radon model. So for that, um, we're going to need to put in, first of all, um, the data that we want to back project. Okay, and um, then we're going to have to specify the angles um, along which we want to back project. So that's the ASI angles. Now, because the azimuthal angles, because we don't want to ramp filter, we need to say no filter, so none for the filter. And we want to back project into the same size as the reconstructed image and the true object. So that's XD again. Okay, so that's the back projection of uh, those, of that ratio in the sinogram space, if you like. Um, once we've done that, we're more or less in a position now to say that the reconstruction is equal to the previous reconstruction multiplied by uh, the back projection of that ratio. Now, we do actually need to normalize for the fact that there could be, in principle, different contributions to the pixels in the reconstructed image. And so we're going to do that by using a so-called sensitivity image. And the sensitivity image, which I call sense here, is just going to be a back projection, so I've got a nice back projection expression here, of um, uniform unit 
um, sinogram data. So remember we initialized our reconstruction with just ones. Well, likewise, I could just create a unit uh, sinogram data set. Um, so let's call that uh, sinogram ones. Um, that's, that's just uh, a matrix full of ones that's of the same size as my measured sinogram. Okay, so sinogram of ones is just um, what it says. It's just taking the measured data um, as a guide for the size and then uh, filling that with ones and that's just a uniform sinogram. The sensitivity image then is just the back projection of um, that sinogram filled with ones. Okay, right, so now when we've got our very simple uh, multiplicative update here, what we should also do now is uh, divide that by the um, sensitivity image. Okay, so that's looking like it should uh, be working for one single update. Uh, let's just do a run and make sure that all is okay. Okay, so this is looking very reassuring. What we've got now is the true object here. There's the measured sinogram. Here is a one update of my reconstructed image. And so perhaps let's see what it looks like. Um, let's do a pause here. Let's see what it looks like when it's uniformly initialized. We'll just take a quick look at that. Okay, so in fact, reassuringly, um, we see a nice uniform uh, image here. And so it's, it's white everywhere, showing a value of one everywhere. And uh, so as we, as we forward project it, in fact, let's also display that forward projection to make it even clearer again. So what I'll do then is take this and um, display that forward projection. Um, let's display it in uh, panel number one, two, three, four, five. Let's put it there. Okay, so position five. Uh, we're going to display the forward projection of the reconstructed image. And so that should hopefully give us a far more complete picture. Let's run this. Okay, so this is the situation to start with. We've got a pause here, so it's waiting for my key press. And what we see then, again, to the true object, there's the measured data. This is my first estimate of the reconstructed image, just uniform everywhere. What I'm gonna do then is forward project it, and that's what we had here. And then we take the ratio between the measured data and the forward projection of that uniform uh, image. There's the ratio there. We're then back projecting that. So in fact, let's actually take a look at the back projection to visualize still further. So let's look at the back projection of the ratio. Um, so there's BP of the ratio. Okay, and we'll display that in the bottom right box there. So that's panel six. Um, and then before doing the update, I'll do another pause here so we can take a look at what is going on. That might be a bit clearer. Right, let's start over then. Okay, right, so now we've got the true object in the top left corner there. We've got the measured sinogram here. This is my reconstructed image, uniformly initialized. I'm gonna forward project it, that's shown here. That's just using radon on that. I'm taking the ratio between the measured sinogram and the forward projection, that's there. Back projecting that ratio, that's this, um, image here, which is then multiplied by that to give the updated image. Okay, so that's the framework. Now we're ready to iterate it. Um, okay, so we can do maybe 10 iterations of that, or in fact, let's go a few more, maybe 20 iterations. And then I think we will be ready and complete with our iterative reconstruction algorithm. So there it is. There's iteration one, two, Okay, that's the first update, I should say. And then we just keep going. Every time I can press a key, we're just getting this object forward projected compared to the measured sinogram, which is the ratio, back projected and multiplied. And obviously we've got the division by the sensitivity image as well to normalize for varying contributions. So there it is. And you can see that as we keep going, um, we're getting closer and closer in our reconstructed image to that true object. So maybe I'll just finish by um, spelling out um, the link to the mathematics. Um, so what we've been looking at then is this kind of situation. Here we've got a true object, some vector t, 
Uh, we've got some measured sinogram. Here I'm showing an example of a noisy sinogram. That's just using plus rand applied to that measured sinogram that we've just been seeing. Um, then what we did was have some iteration XK. Um, that's here, which is forward projected. That's shown here. So the forward projection is the matrix A multiplied by um, the reconstructed image values um, in the vector XK. So K is the iteration number. And then we've got here the ratio between the element by element division between the, the measured sinogram M and the forward projection, which is just the radon transform times the image, that's AXK. So that's the ratio sinogram here. And then what I'm showing here is just the back projection, the transpose of that forward model A operating on the ratio between the measured data and the, the model of the mean sinogram, the forward model, the prediction. And so that's what I'm calling this correction image. Um, and then finally, uh, we multiply, or for, first of all, we've, we've got to divide by the sensitivity image and then we can multiply to get the next update. Um, so that's just this algorithm here, which I've just coded up for you uh, live in this video, uh, where, so what we're doing then is radon here to forward project, doing the ratio here, back project using a transpose, um, multiplying by the current reconstruction to get the next update. And of course, we've got this division just by back projecting. We divide by a back projection of unit data, just a sinogram filled with ones. Now on this um, slide here, you'll also see that I've calculated a square error image, just comparing how that reconstruction is doing compared to the true. And here I'm, I'm plotting a normalized root mean square error as a function of iteration, just to see how the reconstruction is going along. Um, and maybe just to finish on this video, just to show a more conventional uh, description of the algorithm that I've just coded up for you. This is uh, AX, the forward projection. This is now spelled out explicitly in terms of matrix vector multiplication with all the subscripts um, given. Um, this is just the element by element division. This is the transpose here. So now we're summing over I, the first index of the matrix A. And uh, this is the multiplicative update here. And there's the division by the sensitivity image. That's the A transpose one to get the next update. So I hope that's a very uh, simple introduction um, to you um, for how to code up uh, this uh, very popular, very robust and simple image reconstruction algorithm, algorithm that's a, an iterative method. And you can see here the code I put together was very easy to do. I mean, I've spelled it out quite explicitly here. You can probably just do this in a, in a two, three, four lines if you want to make it more compact. I've just tried to visualize it as, as I've gone along here. Thank you very much for listening.